Welcome to the Security and Internet of Things um, session. So for this session, we have um, we have two presentations. Um, the first by Safiq Al Atik. I hope I mentioned the name right. Thanks. So uh, hello everyone, and thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Shafiq. I'm a PhD student at uh, Lund University in Sweden. Uh, this work is a joint work with my supervisor Christian. Uh, it's about distributed XDP proxies again, but nets of things, and we call it XPro. <clears throat> so yeah, let's get started. <clears throat> this is the table of contents of my presentation. Uh, I'm gonna uh, mention a bit about why we're doing this in the introduction, and uh, I'm gonna deep dive into the XPro solution right after that. Uh, and uh, the following is the implementation, and the last part is uh, our experimental evaluation uh, followed by the conclusion. So, uh, anyone aware of, of this situation? Uh, it was in 2016. Uh, so, uh, Octave Klaba, he is the CEO of uh, OVH.com. So, OVH is a cloud provider. Uh, just like AWS, uh, Google Cloud, or Microsoft Azure. So they were being attacked by uh, a very big, uh, a very high traffic, like close to one terabit per second. And apparently, uh, uh, the sources of, of the attack came from small embedded devices, like cameras, uh, home router, in which they still have uh, default username and password. And following this attack, there were some, sub some subsequent attack uh, in which uh, they have a similar pattern. Uh, the sources came from uh, small embedded devices. Uh, it hits uh, crabs on security. It was a, it, it is a uh, block in security and Dean, Dean is a, a DNS provider. I don't think it exists anymore. It's being acquired. acquired. I don't know who acquired them. Um, uh, they, they, they share a similar pattern uh, in which uh, uh, where the source came from. Uh, later, we know that source uh, as uh, Mirai, uh, Mirai botnets. So uh, basically, uh, the Mirai performs all of this attack by first, uh, uh, it scan uh, the IP range or uh, uh, from the internet, and then if 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 it found uh, uh, devices in which they still run uh, default username and password, it will make a report to the report server, and the the report server will dispatch a specific malware for that specific device, and then uh, the loader will will send the malware to the victim. Once the victim is is uh, acquired. Uh, uh, once the malware is installed there, now they, they, become, they become bots, in which this bot can be uh, controlled by a, a, this bot, a CNC, Command and Control, uh, in which uh, at this point now, uh, the attacker can send uh, an attack message anytime they want. It's, it's at their discretion. So we know about Mirai, we know about uh, what happened uh, in 2016, uh, now I'm I'm gonna uh, uh, explain a bit about the attack strategies uh, from from the attacker. Uh, basically, uh, there are two types of the DDoS strategy. Uh, the, the the first one is the periodically low rate attack, in which uh, uh, they try to behave identically to the regular traffic pattern. Uh, the intention here is to fly at, under the radar while at the same time uh, to consume uh, the victim resources as much as possible. Uh, the second one is massive attack. Uh, the, uh, the attacker send large amount of traffic at once. Uh, we believe uh, both uh, type of attack are considered to be harmful, either for the victim or for the IoT device itself, because they are usually battery driven and resource constrained. And uh, in this uh, paper, we try to address uh, uh, both, both of these problems with XPro. So why, why we're doing this? Uh, is this just yet another dose countermeasure? Uh, spoiler alert, no. Uh, uh, traditionally, 
uh, DOS is handled either at the middle boxes or at, at the very end and in the in the in the victim uh, side, uh, applying some some sort of uh, detection mechanism and filter. Uh, but uh, this way of handling DDoS, uh, we, we we observe that this does not consider the the IoT communication patterns that emerge now. The IoT devices that we we observe, they primarily primarily communicate only to a uh, specific uh, backend server. There is no point to to provide a connection to a wider audience of like for example the, the web service that we know today like like google or amazon and the second one uh the botnet threats on the on the device side if we see that from the resource perspective uh it's 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 an undesirable thing and and uh this uh, this gives uh, a large incentive for for the IoT owner to implement the DDoS countermeasure even at the uh, IoT level before the packet is sent to 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 the network. Uh, the last thing uh, uh, for the introduction is is XTP. Why we use XTP? What is XTP? Uh, XTP stands for Express Data Path. It's a novel programmable packet processing in the Linux kernel. Uh, in XDP, uh, the underlying underlying OS uh, it accommodates a safe execution environment uh, to run a B eBPF program. If you don't know eBPF program, it's it's the extended version of of BPF program. So uh, we can we can put a logic in the Linux kernel and we can run that uh, safely in the safe execution environment. Why why this is important because uh, the the earlier we the earlier we decide whether uh, of a packet is bogus or not, uh, uh, the lesser we we can uh, we can use uh, in the resource of, of of the proxy. So, for example, if it turns out that a packet is is bogus, uh, the expro can decide and and drop that packet even before uh, we allocate the memory for 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 that specific incoming packets if you want to know more about xdp uh, there is a nice paper in in the uh, uh, footnote uh the next one it's uh the uh, expro itself so uh, uh we we make we make an assumption uh so the the, the assumption is that the adversary is allowed to infect the IoT units, but the thing is, they are not allowed to prevent uh, the IoT unit to 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 send all of their data to flow over the proxy. So all of all of the all of the outgoing packets must going through the proxy, and the proxy shares the information each other, and they share uh, they share them. Uh, through a centralized database, as you can see in this picture. So we have uh, uh, multiple IoT units. Uh, in fact, um, uh, many IoT units, if you want. A, and then we allow uh, this IoT units to be infected by adversaries. And we have uh, proxies here, and we have uh, this, this database as a this centralized database uh, as a way to share information between proxies. Uh, one IoT unit can one IoT unit can connect to a multiple proxy, but the but it is not a requirement. Uh, the basic requirement is that at least it connects to one of the proxies. Uh, where does Expro fit in uh, our current network? Uh, this this is a, a very uh, simplistic. Uh, 5G network. Uh, so we can put Xpro in Mac. Uh, Mac is multi-access edge computing. So it's it's pretty much close to uh, close to the uh, radio base station. So if, for example, uh, the 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 packet is is bogus, we we don't overwhelm uh, the core network here. Or we can also put that in the in the existing 4G network uh, between. Uh, MME and SGW. Uh, I don't have the picture for that. So uh, the important part of Xpro 
is the filtering design and the synchronization design. Uh, the filtering uh, mechanism is implemented in the XDP hook as an ABPF program. So uh, each packet that arrives at a particular proxy is analyzed and potentially blocked if it turns out to be bogus. And the decision whether to block or not is based on a set of threshold parameter. Uh, this parameter can be tuned to get the right trade-off between security and false blocking decisions. At this point, uh, uh, this, uh, this parameter is uh, statically set and manually. We, we set that manually, but uh, as a reference for, for future work, uh, this will be done in a more automatic way, like for example, using machine learning. This, this is the direction we, we're gonna take uh, in the future work. Sorry, um, Sethi. Um, yeah, five, yes. Yeah, five more minutes. So, okay. Yeah. Sure. Thanks. Uh, uh, this is the packet filtering procedure. I'm not gonna uh, deep dive into this. Uh, but if you have question, you can uh, hit me uh, at the end of this presentation. And uh, the next important thing is the synchronization design, in which uh, all of the proxy they they must have a same page on what happens. Uh, in the what happens uh, in in their network? Uh, th 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 this will take a lot of time to to explain the synchronization protocol. Uh, but if you have question, again, you you can ask me uh, later. Uh, the next part is the implementation. Uh, uh, the first one is, is, is the proxy. So, uh, as I said, uh, uh, in the proxy, we run two important daemon. The, the, the first one is the packet uh, filtering procedure, and the second one is the synchronization. Uh, all of the packet filtering happen in the uh, kernel space. Uh, so, if if the packet is, is, is bogus, then it will be dropped here right before uh, the kernel allocates the memory for, for that specific packet. And uh, the local database here is implemented as a BPF map. It's, it's a data structure provided by eBPF program. And uh, both of these, the, the filtering procedure and the synchronization procedure, they refer to the same, uh, to the same local database in the BPF maps. And the second one is the device site uh, design. So, all of the outgoing packet will always be encapsulated uh, by, by some mechanisms. Uh, in our prototype, prototype, we use a separate uh, modem SOC in which uh, this, this modem SOC is, is, is another uh, IoT board uh, different from the IoT main SOC. So all of the outgoing packet will have a new uh, destination address, address to one of our proxies. Yeah, that's the explanation of the previous picture. Uh, the implementation, we use uh, two types of boards, uh, the ESP32 and FiPi. Uh, FiPi is actually based on ESP32. So uh, there are two prototypes for the IoT device side. Uh, the first one, uh, the ESP plus FiPi. The ESP act as the main SOC and FiPi acts act as the modem SOC. They, they, they connect, they are connected through uh, UART. But the problem is the UART is extremely slow. We, uh, we can't really measure uh, the, the, the correct throughput since it's always kept by the UART. And the second one, uh, the second prototype, uh, we use ESP32 only, and the logic uh, uh, of the encapsulation happened in the uh, uh, lightweight TCP IP stack here. Uh, the experimental evaluation. Uh, so uh, all of the proxies and the centralized database, all of them running Fedora 30 uh, with the kernel version 5.6 with one CPU and one gigabyte of memory. Uh, the bogus message is generated with a packet gen. It's a, a packet generator from the Linux kernel. And uh, the packet gen sends co-op message in which the size of each packet is 64 bytes. Uh, the, the rate of the attack message can be uh, set easily through, to, through the red P value in the packet gap. Uh, 
the, the experimental goals that we have uh, here is that first we want to measure how how our proxy uh, handle the high rate attack like uh, one proxy is connected to two iot units the first one is uh, we assume uh, it's it's non malignant turned it to into botnet and the second one we assume that the traffic is always legitimate uh, legitimate packets uh, the the first one we we police that that uh, that flow and the second one we don't police that flow flow. Uh, the other uh, measurement uh, is for low rate attack in which it's basically the same as the as the previous one but we uh, we have four proxies in which each proxy it is connected to uh, one policed flow and one non policed flow and. Uh, we we gonna simulate whether the proxy can uh, handle if if the attacker try to fly under the radar using uh, lower than threshold on each of the IoT units there. For the device set implementation, we want to measure the pure overhead at the device set. Uh, in terms of uh, RTT and uh, throughput. Uh, this is uh, a single proxy, the the, the high rate attack. It's it's uh, it's uh, it behaves as it is, like like we warned. Uh, so uh, whenever it hits higher than the threshold, uh, the XDP will just uh, drop all all the packet to 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 zero. Uh, the percentage of the pass pass through message is dropped to zero here. And then for the multiple proxy working together, it's a combination of all proxy. So uh, it, it, it took time uh, for them to synchronize between each other because uh, the synchronization from each proxy happened uh, for every period of time. So it's not like direct drop after uh, they detect uh, that, okay, uh, we are being attacked. It's, it's not that directly. So it, it depends on how, uh, how often, uh, the proxy perform the synchronization function. Um, hi, guys. I think, um, you may, you may want to start ending now. So, uh, so yeah, uh, uh, I'll just jump into the conclusion. So, uh, we have, we have designed X pro, uh, and it's, uh, distributed XDP proxies. And the results show that our solution allows strong protection uh, of, overload, of overload to both of the IoT backend and the external attack targets. And but uh, there is a catch that we have to modify the network interface modem, uh, in which uh, there is uh, some pay some price to pay uh, in terms of uh, bandwidth. There. In the future, we want to extend this with uh, machine learning. And thank you. If you have any questions. Hi, Savik. Thank you for your presentation. Yeah. I think we have one question from, um, is it Simon? I'm going to unmute you so you can talk. Okay, thank you. Um, I didn't understand something that you uh, mentioned as an assumption. You said that the IoTs can be infected, the IoT devices, but they your assumption is that the pro the, they cannot prevent the packets flowing through the proxy. Is that implicitly saying that we assume the proxy cannot be DDoSed? That's what you meant, is it? Am I, am I understanding correctly? Because mm, yeah, uh... you need to protect the thing which is protecting your IoTs, right? Mm, yeah. I was trying to work out how do you know how do you protect your proxies from not no. being lost? Uh, yeah, thanks for, for the question. So uh, this assumption is that uh, so if I go back to the picture here. So uh, the assumption is that uh, the, the malware can uh, infect the IoT unit, but it's only in the main SOC here. But it cannot, it cannot uh, change the behavior uh, in which all of the packet, outgoing packet, must be encapsulated and sent to at least one of our proxy. 
So when they inf uh, when when I say that uh, they can infect the IoT units, they can infect the main SOC. But the behavior uh, of this encapsulation, in which all of the packet must going through the proxy, it will not uh, uh, it will not be affected. Uh, we can perform that uh, using many uh, using several uh, solutions. Like for example, we can separate the modem SOC and, and, and the main the and the main SOC, or we can put the logic of this encapsulation in a secure execution environment like like ARM Trust Zone or Intel SGX. Okay. Uh, but in our prototype, uh, we use a different uh, different uh, uh, hardware for modem SOC and the main SOC. That's uh, what we did. Okay, uh, so, so, uh, am I answering your question? So in other words, what you're saying is that your if your filtering works, your your packet flows from the IOTs will be choked and your proxies will effectively not be overwhelmed. Is that what you're aiming for? Uh, the the aim is, yeah. yeah. Uh, the aim is not to overwhelm the backend server. So, so, so the proxy job is to is to drop the packet there because all of the packet will always go through the proxy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, thank you very much for the question, Simon. Um, I have one last question before you go. Um, did you happen to measure the communication overhead because you've included you've included filters and then um, synchronization mechanisms did you happen to measure the computation overhead uh no it's it's the uh the from the iot side it's the uh, rtt and the uh average throughput only all right but it shouldn't that be like doesn't isn't that like a limitation because it actually reduces your communication actually increases your communication latency yeah should be should be should be uh but apparently we don't have that here all right sure anyways thank you very much for your presentation um it was good